Yo, my peoples, what's up? Jason here with the One Stop Co-op Shop. Today, I have another five-point freebie for you for a crowdfunding campaign. This time, it is for The Gig. The Gig is the latest from Brain Crack Games, a dice rolling, dice manipulation, real-time, head-to-head game for one to four players in which everybody's going to play a jazz musician trying to make the best performance and get the most attention from the audience. This one is prototype, so a lot of the components that you're going to see are not final quality. Go ahead and check the crowdfunding campaign, the link for which will be in the show notes so that you can see what the game will look like in its final form. But I'm happy to show you the essential mechanisms and what you're getting in terms of play experience. So let's get to it. My number one is the game's theme. So you're playing individual jazz musicians. You're playing together on the same stage, but as this is a competitive game, the motif is you want to be the one that the audience talks about. Wow, what a great drummer. What a great uh, saxophonist. And that represents uh, you know, the person who gets the most points at the end of the game will be the winner. So uh, in terms of executing the game's theme, uh, it is uh, noteworthy that the makers of the game uh, are not speaking from within uh, a jazz-centric culture. It's definitely kind of an outsider uh, looking at it, admiring jazz, wanting to kind of realize that and bring a sense of jazz to the audience, but in a way that's culturally respectful and that honors uh, jazz culture. So to that end, they have hired sensitivity consultants and cultural consultants. I was one of those paid consultants, so full disclosure for the audience. How they decided to implement the theme is by being subtle. So they're not representing actual jazz musicians. They're kind of evoking them. So you have like an Ella Fitzgerald or a Miles Davis. Uh, I like the multiculturalism of it because, you know, the classic jazz uh, ensembles were very, very multicultural. It, you know, get talent up there. <laughs> That's what uh, would make the audience swing at the end of the day. And the game evokes that without kind of throwing it in your face. Uh, also, in the rule book, you'll have terminology, so like the tune-up, uh, take it to the bridge. Uh, but again, that there's a subtle approach that's not kind of in-your-face, cringy, hey, hepcat daddy -o, all that kind of stuff. They just want you to evoke enough of the theme to be in this world uh, without going too far. I think, <laughs> again, paid consultant, so uh, you know, take it with a grain of salt. But I think that that game did a really good job putting you in this world. My number two is the core mechanism of the game, the real-time dice rolling. So every round, uh, there's going to be a song sheet in the middle of the table, and there are many uh, different song sheets depending on player count and rounds and all that kind of thing. Uh, but each of the players are going to be rolling, 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 dice rolling, trying to maximize uh, what they get on the board. I think they're trying to recall that kind of kinetic, tactile frenzy of, of jazz, uh, no, it has nothing to do with jazz, but <laughs> trying to evoke it as much as possible in the sense of a board game. Now, uh, there are uh, six rows over here corresponding to six numbers. And as you're rolling, you're trying to identify, uh, trying to get those right here. So if I want purples, I want to be able to get those right there. However, uh, sometimes, as in a uh, jazz band where there's a lot of like back and forth, you might get a clash two players going for the same thing. So in that particular case, then you have to re-roll the dice and move on or kind of negotiate it some other way. However, uh, there will be some clashes throughout the game, especially as you get to the higher player counts. The game does have a turn-based variant where you do the real-time dice rolling and then players take turns placing in case you don't like that. Uh, the game does recommend though <laughs> that you get your hands dirty and you put those on the board as fast as possible. My point number three is beauty within the chaos. Uh, as in jazz, it isn't just a bunch of people engaging in kinetic frenzy. They're trying to find that harmony, that beauty, that syncopation that will really result in connection with the audience. As in the game, you want to find that pattern matching syncopation that will result in the most points. So there's a lot of ways to strategize your placement on the dice. Again, it isn't just all chaotic. I've uh, given two examples here. So my drum player prioritized uh, drawing, being able to draw stuff on their board. This is a series of uh, symbols and you know placing things in certain ways will get you points. So what they did was they placed their 
dice in a way that was a little bit suboptimal in terms of symbols. They score points, but they were able to make a full line, which lets them circle a whole bunch of tiles on their board and score points that way. Saxophone player did not make a coherent pattern, so they don't have a ton that they can bring over to their uh, board. They can only bring, make a match of two total, so they're just going to circle these two. However, they were able to make symbol matches, so they'll cross that off, and spotlights. Spotlights can be points, or they can get you audience cards, which can change up your points. So... If you get shot out of one strategy, others are available. There's a lot of ways to make patterns in this game. My point number four is dice mitigation and other ways to manipulate the meta of the game so you have even more control. It's a dice game. Modern dice games, we want our mitigation, don't we? <laughs> and there's some. So normally, these would be kind of a set collection aspect. And you can just totally do that. You know, at the end of the game, you would see how much you have of a certain symbol and then just fill that value in over here. You also have the option of removing one of those symbols if you want to manipulate the dice to get a better effect elsewhere. So I removed a blue that would allow me to reduce the pip value of one of the dice by one and move it to another part of the song sheet. Or here, if I wanted to change it to a die that I did not have, let's say I had a three, four, five, I wanna change one of them to a one, I could do that here as well. So that's the push-pull strategy. You could do mitigation, but at the cost of your points, so another decision layer there. I was not provided the copy of the audience cards for the purposes of this demo. However, from my understanding, you can trade your spotlights uh, for audience cards and change up the way that you score uh, in the game. So if you notice that your game's leaning a certain way, you get a card, you can go that way. Uh, so lots of ways to build strategy upon this basic dice engine. And so for my final point, because this is the one-stop co-op shop, you know I had to comment on the solo mode. Designed by David Tercy, very easy to implement. All you do is set up a two-player game and you get a song sheet and its challenge dice. You do not need any extra components in order to operationalize the solo mode. Please keep in mind, these are the solo rules as I know them now. They might change as the campaign progresses. Okay, so you would take your dice and also one challenge die and roll. So before you looked at your own dice, you would place this. Uh, it would go, so one, two, three, four, and five will be the spotlight. So in this case, I rolled a three. So I would have to place it on the topmost leftmost symbol. So then right there. So if I was going for a purple, then I'd be out of luck. <laughs> now you have a choice. You can place your dice. However, if you place one die, you gotta place them all. Uh, or you move on. If I decided that I don't like this outlay and I roll again, then I will take another of the challenge dice. I'd have to place that one, so one, two, three, four. I would place that here and then see if I could maximize here. The challenge being, can you get the most from your die? Can you judge how good your dice are on initial roll or do you need those extra rolls risking more placements from the bot in order to maximize your score? So there's that push-pull. You want to take what you have now, the bird in hand, or go for two in the bush. That's kind of how the solo mode goes. And then at the scoring phase, you would see whatever uh, the bot rolled. You would kind of mark that the bot has that and you would score relative to a lot of what the game ordinarily does. There's some other stuff attached to solo mode, and once again, it may change as the campaign goes on, but I think that gives you a sense for the basics of how it would work. So that was the gig crowdfunding campaign. Go ahead and check the show notes. Check out that project page to see whether it's worth your time, your attention, and ultimately your dollars. While you're down there, like the video, subscribe to the channel, become a part of our community here on the One Stop Co-op Shop. Whether it's from big established creators or small independent publishers or anywhere in between, our sole mission here on the One Stop Co-op Shop is to bring cooperative fun for your family or solo fun all on your own. This is Jason reminding you that we'll see you at the next stop.